Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see that it says live. We are live, actually. Ihoro. We're good. Is the lighting perfect? Yeah. Thank you, brother director. Right then. Um, Uhuru Africa and Uhuru comrades, as well as others who are checking out um, this live. My name is Asa Somali Anpu. I am from the African People's Socialist Party and Uhuru Movement in occupied Azania, South Africa, in another name. And we would like to report on what happened yesterday and the days following that. You know, today is the 13th of July, 2021. And yesterday there was a event in KZN as well as Gauteni uh, regarding the uh, so-called looting of stores and the burning of streets and whatnot. African people are all over the place. It's social upheaval and it's a crisis for this country. So we have, as a party, decided to respond to this thing because we see that the South African government and South African media are trying to demonize African working class people. They're trying to attack black masses and call us all kinds of names and of course, this is something that they are saying in order to instill a mentality to what they have already been doing. So we wrote a statement as the party, and uh, it's titled, Who are the real looters by the African People Socialist Party? It's interactive, um, but also it is concise in terms of trying to get to the point. There has been a widespread attack on African malls in KwaZulu Natal, as well as Gauteng, as well as uh, in Pumalanga, you know, increasingly. Some say that this is a feeling, uh, this is due to a feeling of loyalty to ex President Ujacob Zuma. Others say that it's because the lockdown was extended by Urama Posa. We wonder if the African working class who suffer colonially imposed poverty and violence have or should have loyalty to a neo-colonial puppet of South Africa, be it Ujacob Zuma or Ura Maposa. Is that really the reason? Is that the reason that people who are oppressed rise up and tear up the streets? We don't think so. The Uhuru movement, the African working class does not think that is the reason for that happening. So what is the reason behind these attacks? on the malls? What is the reason behind the, you know, taking of food, oils, all kinds of things, resources, right? Yesterday and today. What has been the reason? Because the media, the South African media talked on it, but you haven't heard a perspective from black poor people yet. And this is something that's gonna be necessary to do. So excuse me. We say, what are the objective factors that have resulted in the crisis for the country? Objective factors, not subjective factors, not feelings. We don't want to hear that loyalty to a certain person. We don't want to hear about love or anger. No, we want to talk about objective factors that led to the situation, right? Poverty of black masses. Are black people poor? Yes or no? It's an objective thing. You can't debate about it. Why are they poor? Why are black masses poor? Okay. Uh, poverty of the black masses, ownership of the means of production in the hands of the bourgeoisie. Is this a fact or not? It's not a subjective question. Ownership of the means of production, the things that the factories, the roads, the land, is it in the hands of white people? Is it in the hands of white ruling class? Is it in the hands of all these colonizers or is it in the hands of black poor people in the ghetto? These are objective things that you cannot really quibble about, right? How did the bourgeoisie get these resources? How did white people get this uh, factory that they're living in, uh, owning this farm, this firm, the land, the roads, the mines? How did they get them? How? That's the question. Okay, third point, violence from the colonial state is another objective factor. So there's three factors. It's the poverty of the black masses, 
ownership of the means of production in the hands of the bourgeoisie and violence from the colonial state. What is the colonial state? The colonial state is a state of the colonizer. Who is the colonizer? That's the white man, right? He created South Africa. South Africa is his law, it's his government. So his state, his police uphold the law, uphold the government, the South African government. That's what the state is. So it's a state based on colonialism. It's a colonial state against the colonized for the purpose of the colonizer, for the benefit of the colonizer. Why um, is, is, is the state exhibiting violence? It's because it's exhibiting violence because the state must protect one class against another. When did the state come into being? This state came into being in 1652 when this country was conceived. So Jan van Riebeck was actually a template and the blueprint of the South African state. If you think Jan van Riebeck came here with guns and somehow that's different from your local policeman from the SAPS, then um, you need to read history again. Now, these objective factors played a role in yesterday's occurrence. The resources that black workers took were minimal, were small, mini. They were very small. I do not care. I saw people filling up trolleys after trolleys and four car loads with all kinds of resources from Vanderbilt to Everton Mall and Palm Springs and KZN. Small, all of it. Those resources were, were minimal to our needs because they're not going to be able to feed our community. I'm talking about our community. I'm not talking about one person. I'm talking about the entire African community, the entire African nation even. I could talk about a single African population in a province and it'll never be enough anyway, right? They are minimal to our needs and they are unable to be equal to the losses for over 400 years since the inception of this country. They can't cover that cost. Things that were taken, where did they come from? And how did the mall get them? I hear about people saying that we are looting, we're looting the malls. Where did the loot from the malls come from? Okay, we're gonna break it down. It came from companies, right? Tedelecs, Hisense, all these companies, Ellerings, Joshua Door, if Joshua Door is still around. <laughs> all these companies, got these products from factories. Now, the question is, where did these factories get these products from? And where are these factories? These factories are on land, they're not in space. They're not occupying the air or the ether. These, these factories are right here on African soil, first of all, and using African labor. People who work at the factories, do they live in the suburbs? No, sir, they live in the ghettos. Where are the ghettos? The ghettos are the places where the people are taking from the malls in the first place. So that's what we have to understand. The workers are in the ghetto. The ghetto is a part of the colony. South Africa created the ghetto to keep black people there. We have gotta be aware of that, brothers and sisters. South Africa is the real looter. Therefore, consequently, as a result, we know that South Africa is the real criminal. It is the real looter. Looting Africa for centuries while people, um, are pinning us as the criminals, while the masses of my people, our people, African workers, for 500 to 600 years, 621 years, Brother Jay, right? Mm -hmm. 621 years. This country's been looting imperialism, colonialism, has been looting Africa for 621 years. And now yesterday, they just blew up the entire world and told everybody about Black poor people being looters in a 24-hour span. That was the reality in this. The police chief, right? The South African police chief, uh, as well as entire state, they made statements this morning, you know, will not do anything new. After their statements, I'm not talking about their statements, I'm talking about their actions. I don't care what their statements are, because they probably sound nice to themselves. They will not do anything new to African people. Whether their statement is wanya tsotsi or washa tsotsi or shoot to kill, I don't care what their statement is. The fact of the matter is, it's nothing new to African people. It's nothing new. The tsotsi that they speak about is the African poor masses. 
You understand? They've never, ever, ever in the history of South Africa seen the South African police defense forces or South African police services shooting a white person here. Not even accidentally, like they just did in Bramfontein, not even purposely like they did yesterday and killed six African workers. So there's, there's no need for us to concern ourselves about what the state, uh, the chief exactly uh, said, what's his policy. No, 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 there, there's nothing new he's going to do. Not say, but do. What must be done? Because we're going to have to bring this back to ourselves as African workers. We have seen certain situations, and I want to speak on this issue, that uh, African workers who are from outside this country, this border that white people created, were threatened yesterday, were um, feeling uneasy, you understand, were actually involved in some violence where people uh, who think they are different from them, from us, right, from who we are, started attacking the shops from Somalia, from Zimbabwe, from Congo, and every other place from Ghana. Yes, sir. We attack African people. There is no criticism at all from anybody who's criticizing colonialism. What the colonizers did by taking away African people from our resources, from our land, from each other. So when we come back and see each other as aliens and foreigners, it's not a result of ourselves as African people working in our own interests. It's us working in the interests of the white ruling class, in the interests of the South Africans, in the interests of the so-called rulers of this country, right? That's the South Africans, that's the white people, not you. If you're black, you are very far away from South Africa. In fact, South Africa is anti-black. If you're black, you are not a South African. You are not a Somalian, you're not a Nigerian. You're nothing but an African, just like the rest of us. You're just like me, right? Yeah. So this is something that we have to be able to understand. We need an African revolution, an African revolution. Yesterday, people um, were talking about everything uh, being taken from the malls. And we say this as the African People's Socialist Party. We say everything that people got uh, was a piece of what is ours. We took a piece of it, right? We just don't know that it's, a, it's, it's ours. We just don't know that, you know? And we just do not understand the fact that you may take a feather, but what you really want is the whole chicken, right? You may take an egg and say, these eggs are so useful. You know, you break your neck just to snatch an egg, but really what you want is the whole chicken. Let's not lie to ourselves as the, African working class. Let's not let this white man and these rich black people and politicians, these counselors, these ANC folk, all the way to the EFF folk and everybody else up in there in parliament. Don't let these people, these jokers jive us. Don't let these people trick us and tell us that we are looting this and that. No, no, no. Everything that we took yesterday is a small, very small Who is producing them? Who, who are the producers? I know farm owners, I've never seen farmers because the farmers are usually either stuck in the farms living inside shanties there or they're living inside the ghetto and waking up at 3 a.m. to go work for Mr. Van Beek van der Klek. Do you understand? So that's the, say, that's the real issue of where everything else comes from. We need, to know, uh, we need to know that we are the workers, right? We are the workers. We are the producers of everything. And therefore, unemployment is not possible for a slave under slavery, because some of our people are being told that uh, we're going to starve, you know, in Gauteng and in uh, KZN. And of course, this is a case that might happen and will happen, right? Why will it happen? It's because we are not owning the means of production. We're only going to starve because there's no food. Why is there no food? Because the factories, the land is not in our hands. So we can't create those things. It's not that there's no factories. We didn't burn up the factories, like I said. We didn't burn up the food. We took the food, but the factory is still there. No one's working in the factory. Why? Because the white man said so, not because there are no people. So that's part of the reason. So there's no such thing as unemployment. It's, it's a myth. It's a myth called unemployment. It is not possible for a slave to be unemployed under slavery. If I'm sitting on the corner selling cigarettes, 
or I'm sitting down in a corner depressed there, not knowing what I'm going to do with my life. That is part of what slavery is. That's the job that I'm doing for South Africa. That's what the white man needs me to do. There are two jobs at least to even prove this thing. There's a job called loss of land, which is having all this land in Africa, right? Taken by corporations, companies, mines, big white people's businesses, gigantic churches, schools, parliaments, cities, and pushing poor people, black people, into the ghettos, small, small spaces where we live in. That's, that's part of the job that we're in. So if you're having an argument with your neighbor because your neighbor crossed the, the little fence that you have in the ghetto, you are doing what? You're, you're, doing, you're doing jobs there. You're doing work there. You're doing work for this country. Second job that every African has who's a worker, threat of labor. Threat of labor happens when there's 11 people or 12 people or whatever number of people, and then one of them gets chosen to work. And then the other number of people is sitting there waiting for their turn. So now the boss can exploit you as much as possible and you can't even turn back and say, no, I've had enough of this. You can't do that because the boss will quickly kick you out and there's many other people who are willing to take your space for even less the price. That's called the threat of labor. It's a game that the white capitalist boss plays on the people. So the firms and factory bosses should have been the ones that we took home yesterday. The firms and the factory bosses, the mine owners, the CEOs, the De Beers mines, the Johan Ruperts, those are the people we should have taken home with us yesterday, maybe in small pieces. Everybody get a piece of them, right? And take them home with us. That's the thing that was supposed to happen yesterday. We should have came home with a piece of these people, not just what they steal from us, because they are going to do it again. You let them live, they are going to do it again. You let them stay there in that factory and own it, they're going to close the factory and starve you to death. They can do whatever they want to do. They can burn the factory down. They can leave with all the resources that you have created as that factory. They can pack it up in small pieces and go back to Portugal or Netherlands, wherever the hell these white people come from. So we have to be aware of that. Target the bourgeoisie, target the white ruling class, target the South Africans. You understand? Got to be clear on that. We need to take over the means of production as the black working class. We are not looking for Julius Malema or whoever the other Negro is who talks about black stuff, who's talking about don't worry uh, if you're black and you're a billionaire, you can keep the land. No, no, no. We're talking workers here. It's the end of that. Everybody else who's, who's, who's up, with, up with the white man up there, they're leaving with the white man. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, please join the African People's Socialist Party uh, and the Uhuru Movement, our effort to build in South Africa and help us destroy the country that has looted Africa and African people for all these years. This is what we need to be able to do. So I will implore everyone to share this message share this widely as possible, make sure it gets out to each and every poor person in the ghetto. Um, as for the politicians and all these other people, pranksters who are out here, they can get this. We would like to see what their response is to what we've just said. You understand? We'd like to see what they think of what we've just said because they cannot challenge what we say. They can't challenge it. They can only scoff at it. They can only mock it. They can take me to court, but they'll never challenge the truth. Bring it. Black power, all power to the people. Black power to the African community. Uhuru.